Om Shanti, good evening. Welcome. Welcome to the Tuesday workshop. Um, before I start, for this workshop, you're going to need a piece of paper and something to write with. So if you have a special journal or your favorite notebook or something, you can pull that out. Otherwise, just any piece of paper and a pen will do. My name is Sister Kyoko, and um, I have been a student of Raj Yoga meditation for about 20 years. I took this knowledge in Fresno, California, and what I like about this Raj Yoga meditation is that um, it gives me options when I feel like being stuck or being too rigid about what something should be or could be or my expectation is not met then it makes me realize that i have options i can choose it's free to choose and become calmer and so this has been the most beneficial thing I have discovered through this meditation. And I hope to keep sharing that with others because I learn by sharing and also um, other people can benefit. So today's topic is uh, called permission to be happy. <laughs> but who is giving who permission is Actually, oh, I should have just start from the beginning, right? Um, it is we ourselves who give permission. And it's not really a permission. It's just that uh, we learn to be free, free to choose what we want to feel, what we want to experience in our lives. And so, um, we're going to do some reflective exercises. Uh, but first I will just ask you several questions and you can just jot down your answers. Um, you can share later or you don't have to. It could be very personal. So if you decided not to share, it's okay. So those of you who just joined, um, if you can get a piece of paper and a pen, to write with, that would be very helpful for this workshop. Okay, so what makes me happy? Ask yourself this question. What makes you happy? Is that your house, vacation, going shopping with others, your car, food, um, a person, money, grandchildren, uh, where you live, your garden, your clothes, your job titles, your creativity, uh, going out with your friends, going shopping, maybe your pet makes you happy, um, being in nature, listening to music or watching movies or YouTube, your phone, <laughs> um, doing Facebook postings, maybe your religion, um, your family members, parents, your siblings, old friends, old time friends, uh, maybe solitude. Sometimes 
makes you happy. Um, or complete freedom, the way you look, um, or when you pray, uh, receive praise from others, or when you are understood, valued, when you feel safe, when you feel respected, when you are listened to, when you're well cared by someone or heard by someone. So what makes you happy? Write down as many things as you can think of. Could be anything. I was just giving you the list of things that I could think of. But it could be beyond this or could be completely different. It is your own feeling. What makes you happy? So now looking at your list, keep writing. If you have more, keep writing. If um, you look at your list and all the things that you wrote about happiness, are they physical or spiritual? So you can categorize them. You can put P for spiritual, uh, physical, S for spiritual. So you know that um, you're differentiating the two. And if you're not sure if it's physical or spiritual, the way to know is um, physical happiness is usually coming from material things or um, people or something that um, eventually uh, disappear. One day it'll disappear. Like money, if you keep spending the money, it's not going to regenerate, right? So it's going to disappear one day unless you have something more incoming. Whereas spiritual happiness is like something that you feel something that you have cultivated from inside that uh, you might have forgotten for a long time, but you can pull that out when, when you need it. And so it's like um, you have a, this goodie bag that's available and when you want to look for certain things, you put your hand in the bag and then pull out and that is exactly what you were looking for. So it's something that um, you are able to get hold of it when you want to. So that is the spiritual happiness. And if you're not still sure which one, just leave it uh, as is. It's okay. We will find out. So if you just join now, uh, we were making a list of what makes you happy. Let me go back to the other one. So there are many things that makes you happy in, in your life. So you were just making the list, okay? And then we were categorizing whether it is physical happiness or spiritual happiness. So now I would like you to think about for how long does your happiness last? 
So you look at your list again and look at the things that make you happy. How long does it last? So if you get a brand new car or if you buy a new house, of course you're happy, you're excited, you take care of it very well because it's brand new and it's yours, finally, it's yours. But how long does the happiness last? So you can write down on each item on your list. It could be several years, it could be like a week. It could be for lifetime. So um, anyone who's ready to give an example of how long your happiness last you can i think you can unmute yourself right can you unmute yourself and talk i think so anyone like to share I can go ahead and share. This is Kelly. Oh, hi, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Okay. Um, how many How many things should I share? I'll just share a few things. Whatever you like to share. <laughs> you can <laughs> all. <laughs> I'll just, I'll try to pick a variety because I put some totally like wildly different things. Um, right. Like I put, I did put the Friday Healing Heart group on there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously that's, I mean, I would call that spiritual for sure. Mm. Um, and then um, visits to Portland make me really happy. We have family and friends there. Um, and I mean, I, I would call that spiritual. I mean, usually happiness, I, I, I'm usually happy for weeks after we return. Um, and then I put some other like different physical things like coffee and that makes me happy just in the moment while I'm drinking it. It's not like that carries me through the day really. Um, yeah. Like public radio makes me happy in the moment. Um, antiques, they don't, I mean, they just make me happy while I'm looking at them physical. So do you own them or you go to shop and look at them or um I have some things I'm not like a big collector but I have a few pieces of furniture that you know we've collected through like family or like antique like I have some old cameras and um you know yeah I'm nothing right. extensive but yeah I, I like to go to old uh, antique stores too Okay, that's very interesting. So that's kind of like your hobby, right? You're inclined to look for things that are antique. Right, yeah. And then you feel like contentment or some nostalgic feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay, yeah. that's something new. I never thought about that. <laughs> because I always think about something new. Like when you get a new cloth or something, you become. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I love old stuff. I love it. Wonderful. Makes me so happy. That's why it's good to share because, you know, we get different perspectives. I never yes. thought about that angle. So thank you so much, Sister. Yeah. Kim. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, anybody else like to share? I would like to share. Okay. Uh, this is Edna Weir. Yes, Edna, yes. 
Great. Yeah. So some of the things that make me happy is uh, when I spend time with my nephew who's three years old, that makes me nephew wow okay much younger nephew uh, he's just he's gonna turn three oh i'm with him i'm very very uh, when I oh you know what um sister i think you're breaking a little bit okay can you hear me now now yes yes okay when when i learn new things it makes me happy and when i'm cared by people and people care for me and they show love for me it may be when i spend time with my eldest sister i feel very very happy and sometimes not thinking or work makes me happy Okay, what makes me happy is to get hugs from my grandkids. <laughs> grandkids, uh, they hugs and I'm so happy. And also music. I love music. All kind of music. I dance, I sing, and then my whole spirit, you know, be happy. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> what, makes, yeah. what makes me happy is my clothes and that lasts for a while and then, <laughs> and then um i like um the weather you know when it changes it reminds me of certain moods and when um i'm doing good with my health my weight which i'm not right now that makes me happy because i know that i'm taking care of myself and that lasts a long time. Oh, and good. So I'm working on that right now. And then, um, like when I have perfume, that makes me happy, you know, to have things because we live in a physical world. And I, and jewelry, I and I have jewelry, and I that makes me happy too. I have good jewelry. Wonderful. Yeah, perfume is something that gives you a different mood too right the scent different yeah mood. yeah great thank you okay somebody else hi sister kyoko this is olga yes i'm shanti <laughs> so, so i have a few things that make me happy uh like Gardening makes me happy. Um, time with myself makes me happy. Nature makes me happy. Like walks in nature or to be in nature. Meditation makes me very, very happy. Music makes me happy. And to travel makes me happy. But uh, everything is short-term uh, happiness. The only one that lasts is the meditation, the happiness from meditation. Mm. Wonderful. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Om Shanti. Yes, Om Shanti. This is Sutanya. Ah, okay. uh, yeah. I, I agree with Olga uh, that the same here material people material things usually gives us some excitement at the beginning which does not last for long and eventually it will disappear go go away any excitement mm -hmm. about something new or something great something um but i also agree that um, like olga said meditation when i mastered raja yoga and i started practicing and applying in my life daily and for the past five years it was consistent practice of raja yoga and and that's what really really gives me true happiness that never never goes away <laughs> never goes away it's always here always with me and even when i feel sad or down or the weather is not great something else from outside 
all I have to do just to connect to Baba, sit in my meditation and my, my happiness just be, being rediscovered immediately. <laughs> re, right. Reinstall, reinstall, rediscover it, re, it just comes back. <laughs> Wonderful, something that comes back, that's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. It doesn't disappear forever. Never, never, that is something I can rely on and trust. And I know that is something always here, always with me and for me, available for me. So, but like materials, since people, yes, they give us some sort of excitement, happiness, three days, three weeks, sometimes three months, or for some people, maybe three years or longer. <laughs> I don't know. But usually, like you said, things disappear over time and excitement disappear and replaced with something else or lost or forgotten or taken away or but uh, those things usually don't last forever okay yeah great thank you for sharing anybody else like to share uh om shanti sister i like to share uh there are a lot of things that make me happy but the most important or uh, something that is on the top is um, every day I talk, I ask, I share a lot of stuff to Baba Supreme. And uh, almost every day I receive his respon responses in Murli. So that is something so beautiful. That, that feeling, that feeling is, I would say, beyond happiness. That is something out of the world. Yeah. So that uh, when your inner questions or your stuff, your inner voice is addressed, that too by God. So that is something, Some, some uh, sometimes I get shocked, surprised, because, uh, I, because that is something so strange and, you know, maybe I never have imagined that it would be answered, but, you know, so that is so special for me, yeah. Okay, so connecting with God and listening to God's knowledge and practicing that and discovering something new that... It's something, it's something like, you know, uh, my best friend or my best companion or someone within my family is, you know, uh, that connection is something like that, so corporeal, not even, you know, in corporeal feeling, that's something so uh, physical or, you know, corporeal feeling. So mm. that is something I can't put in words clearly, but so, so, uh, so special. Mm. Wonderful. Okay, thank you for sharing. Okay, anyone else like to share? Just maybe one thing. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I was shy to share. <laughs> I'm first time here. Okay. Um, Yes, hi, my name is Ina, and um, it's interesting everything, like people say different things, and at the same time, it's kind of the same about meditation and God connection, you know, and why, what I want to share, like, yeah, there was material stuff I, I wrote, and um, I think one of the things um, that I would like to share, it's, uh, I believe in power of mind, of course, and Sometimes imagination, my imagination gives me happiness because uh, creating, like I have some pictures in my mind, you know, about my future. And when I feel a little bit kind of uncomfortable here, I'm just uh, in meditation, I'm going there, let's say in my dream house or in my, my dream job, you know, and I live there mm -hmm. and it gives me happiness and it 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 lasts <laughs> it lasts long yeah right. kind of yeah just creating creativity and imagination yeah wonderful yeah creativity that makes you happy yeah good thank, thank you. you yeah okay anybody else now i'm gonna go to the next slide so uh, you mentioned how long it lasts and then what changes your state of happiness into the state of unhappiness? So now when the happiness disappears, 
from the things or people or whatever you were happy about. What happens exactly? Why do we lose happiness? Is that because of the other person? Or is that because we change our attitude or things become too old and we're not too excited about it anymore? Or maybe you have a different perspective in life now that you're not so sure that it gives you happiness or not. So what happens? You can write it down. It could be a long answer. And if you would like to share what happens, you're welcome to unmute yourself again. Uh, sister, I want to share what yeah. I realized is when I'm too much involved, uh, when my mind is fully occupied uh, in either in walks or in uh, within people, like when I am, uh, I'm not realizing myself or when, when I'm forgetting things that I should be valuing and too much occupied and getting influenced by people or walks or anything uh, outside and that state uh, there are chances that I feel unhappiness because um, I feel that I, I those times I usually forget things that should be you know uh, kept in mind to in order to feel happiness so for me it's like forgetfulness I should say when oh, I forget. you forget what's important, what you value. Yes. Okay. Not that uh, things change, but it's just you are not consciously thinking about the yes. same. It's like sw switch on and switch off. So <laughs> that's my experience, yes. When I'm talking to someone and I get influenced because I'm switched off. <laughs> so <laughs> something like that, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we get influenced by what people say. Yes. what we see yes that's very true on shanti once again sister i yes. would say unmet unmet expectations then we don't meet expectation for either for others for people or ourselves or events circumstances when we don't receive what we expected uh, so unmet expectations of course and lost if somebody lost something or taken away, there's a um, feeling of great disappointment and unhappiness because, because the attachments, because people used to have attachments to sins and people. And when it's lost, when it's gone, there's a sorrow, there's a grief, which is equal to unhappiness, correct? Yeah. Yes, Great. what makes me, what makes me unhappy when I'm in pain or challenging health issues? That's what makes me really unhappy and sad when I have pain. Is that a physical pain or emotional pain? Physical. Physical pain. Okay, yeah. yeah. That could be very difficult. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Um, what makes me unhappy is when I, then I learn I have to stay on top of things and do what I'm supposed to be doing. Like if it's a job or something, I just realize that maybe I'm, I'm fine if I'm good in my meditation and my spirituality and I'm not happy or something's wrong, I try to correct it like do something to make it work out okay and not have so much faith in material things but i do have an attachment to material things 
Okay, so when you said uh, you had to do some tasks or jobs, is that because you get pressure to do well or somebody's expecting you to do something that Both. you can't meet or? Both, like if I'm, not, if I'm not happy, I have to find out if someone else is, like if I'm following the, the protocol, then there's no reason for me to be unhappy. Like I should be recommended for my job and not like negative. And if it's negative, then I have to go somewhere else and make it positive yeah. and make, be in a situation that's more positive. Okay. When I, that's like, I said one day, I wonder like, cause I moved into a new apartment in the building. I was in a different room. And when I get out of my meditations, I wonder like, how people are interacting with me because I was gone for two months. Like when I wake up from the, you know, is it going to be negative or is it going to be positive and how I'm supposed to interact with other people? Oh, okay, I see. So you're a little bit concerned about how other people react to what you're doing. Exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. That's understandable. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. Anybody else? Om Shanti, Sister Kyoko. This is Anuja. Yes, Om Shanti. Yeah. So uh, one thing uh, that you rightly put on the slide right now is uh, being disoriented or perplexed or unclear because, because I, I think I am one of these uh, not really unhappy, right? I'm disoriented, perplexed or unclear when my to-do list is not finishing right? Even though like I'm keeping Baba with me, I'm trying to take do traffic control sometimes, but somehow the household work, the office work, it's going on, right? So, so that's the time when I feel that uh, I think I'm disoriented and even though I'm not really unhappy and the days when I'm free, when there is less office work, when there is no household work, then I'm very happy. <laughs> mm. So maybe your list is too, too big, too much to do. Yeah, sometimes a few days there is too much to do. And of course, my Karam Yoga and Yoga with Baba gets impacted also. So that's why probably I'm disoriented totally. Right. Okay. So work overload. Yeah. in the house or your office yes okay Both. okay yeah and that overload is also like my definition because i don't know how much is uh, a lot sometimes when i'm in a very good state of mind then a lot of work also doesn't impact my mental stability and sometimes sometimes uh, uh it is basically depends from day to day. <laughs> yeah, it so. depends on the person too. So yeah, I'm sure whatever you feel is okay. We're just yeah. sharing. So yeah, there's no need to compare with other people. We understand. Yeah. yeah. True, true. When thanks. you're overloaded, you're overloaded. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing. Edna, did you want to share? Yes, I like to share a few things about um, unhappiness. And uh, when I, I get very, I feel very unhappy, sad, and stressed when I see my family. Oh, you're breaking again. I feel, uh, I see my, especially, um, my my sister okay. and sometimes I feel unhappy when I see people are honest in their dealing I believe in honesty and I'm a very up but feel especially oh. at especially at my workplace sometimes I feel people are not honest okay and that really makes me unhappy okay i think you said some keywords but we were not able to hear <laughs> so okay. you said something about your sister yeah i was saying uh, when i see my family members in any pain then it makes me 
unhappy okay. because I am concerned about their happiness. So that makes me sad. I just want them to be happy. Okay. And sometimes mostly like eight to nine hours of my day goes at work. Mm. And I feel unhappy when I see people are not honest in their dealing. Okay. That really makes me very, very unhappy because I truly believe in be in dealing with honesty. Okay. So that is something that that can that really makes me unhappy. And I feel sometimes it's not in my control to make other people, you know, be honest to me because it's a it's a trait that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. Right. Okay, I understand now. We were able to hear you. Thank you. Great. Okay. Anybody else like to share? So um, I'm going to move on. So the question is, is it possible to stay in constant happiness? And the answer is yes. But there is a condition. And I'm going to answer this question later on, um, but I want to introduce a reflective exercise called appreciative inquiry. And then it is uh, something that's developed by a person named David Cooper Ryder. And he came up with this, um, way of kind of tweaking our mind yeah our ability to think and so it's based on this idea that the moment we ask a question we begin to create a change so then something happens something that um gets triggered and then creates some positivity in us. So um, it is done in a very uh, meditative state. So we will practice that too. And um, I'll show you the model. And you can also look this up too. It's called Appreciative Inquiry. And um, we start from what's in the middle. So the positive core that everybody has inside. So the core is based on happiness, peace, love, compassion, kindness, truth, all the positive uh, qualities. Um, and then when things happen, when we um, witness something negative, like um, sister was mentioning, somebody is dishonest with you. And initially it kind of hits you in the way that, oh, you know, um, this person is trying to deceive me or maybe, you know, doing something behind my back and I cannot trust this person anymore. And you just feel like being a victim. So when things happen, people do things and say something to you. First, we start with the discovery. So instead of feeling um, like uh, being attacked or um, criticized, you change the way you look at things and then appreciate the best of what is. Whatever it is, whatever this person, how he or she demonstrated dishonesty or whatever it is, you just uh, take that moment what is, and then appreciate the best of it. And this takes a lot of um, 
like a different pattern. You have to create a different pattern of thinking because we're used to think in terms of, you know, something negative, something that um, being uh, said that was like intentionally, you know, negative or bad. And you feel like, being picked on or um, maybe tricked on or we tend to go into certain direction. Everybody has a different tendencies, but put those, you know, old tendencies aside and say, let me look at this one more time and what is good about it. And then the second one is called dreaming. So once you start thinking, you know, appreciation about the moment, you think great thoughts and let go of the expectation and create great possibilities. So you start dreaming about what could be possible. What could be possible of this person who is being very dishonest, obviously, what can be done in a positive way. Not that you're going to do something about it or uh, something to them, but what could be the great possibilities. And then the third one is called design. What is ideal? You have this ideal situation, the scenarios in your head. And how can you construct it and then sustain it? And so then you discover, um, you know, new way of moving forward. So you are letting go of the old patterns and you, you know, creating something great. You're thinking about possibility then you design your ideal. You get to construct it. And then you get to keep it going so that you don't feel stuck being a victim or being um, like put down or excluded. Or, uh, you keep moving forward in a positive way. So then the last one is called destiny. Now you are creating your future, not about other people, but creating yourself to be someone new, new way of being. So that um, your perspectives will change. Even though you witness something negative, we, even though you experience something uh, to be very unpleasant, but you go back to the positive core. Peace, happiness, love, compassion, kindness, truth, and there are other things you can probably think of, like appreciation. Appreciation is a very wonderful thing, um, like gratitude. And uh, when you share gratitude with other people, it's so like uh, multiplies. And uh, I started this uh, gratitude journal with someone who's not uh, physically close to me at all. She's in different country, but we connected through uh, spiritual studies and meditation. And so um, she was also having um, like a very negative thoughts about herself, like depression, you know? And then once you have a depression, like uh, thoughts of depression, like I'm no good and I cannot do things I used to do anymore. Once you have like a little bit seed of that kind of thought, it'll just, you know, uh, precipitate. How do you say it? Precipitate. It just goes down. 
and you go deeper, deeper into more and more depression. So I thought, you know, how can we keep our positive thinking going is to write down what you are grateful of or grateful for. And so we exchange emails every day. Um, I usually write mine in the evening at the end of the day. I reflect on my day and then try to think about, okay, what, what do I appreciate? What, what am I grateful for? And then I think she, when I write, when I finish writing, it's like her waking time. So she gets to read it when she wakes up. And then she writes hers after reading mine. So we just go back and forth like that. And then it's, uh, we comment on each other's, um, uh, you know, gratitude uh, journal entries and encourage each other, you know, that was so good that you felt this way and that way you did this. And, and so it's very um, positive that something I appreciate is um, shared with somebody else who also uh, feels happy about reading it. And so it's very much a positive experience. And we started this since pandemic started. So it's been over a year, year and year and a half, right? Since March, 2020. And I think we're gonna keep going um, because it helps us to, you know, keep things in uh, perspective. So um, appreciative, appreciative inquiry is kind of like that too, but you're gonna do this one by yourself. It's to go inside and listen to your inner words. So now you need something to write with. We're going to do this uh, reflective process right now. Um, so I'll play uh, very relaxing music. And you can just be in the meditative state so that uh, you can kind of relax, become calm, but stay awake, stay alert and aware. And I'll just um, take you through this process in a meditative way. So that your mind is very serene and quiet. And you have plenty of time to think about each reflective point. So you can sit comfortably in your chair or on the floor. You can lie down if you choose to. And take a deep breath in. And breathe out slowly. Keep breathing in and out. Slowly and gently. Keep breathing in and out. 
slowly and mindfully as your breath slow down your thoughts also slow down Keep breathing in and out, slowly, and relax your body too. If there's any tightness or pain in any part of your body, Keep breathing into it. Make sure you breathe out all the way. And take another deep breath in. You're becoming calmer more peaceful inside your mind is quiet Your body is relaxed. You feel serene. Silent. Now, remember the time when you experienced something positive, since Last year, in March 2020, when the lockdown started in where you were living, remember the time when you had positive experience since March You can write down that positive experience.
based on your experience, which of your core inner qualities made that experience possible for you? Which of your core inner qualities made your experience possible? Your core inner qualities can be peace, happiness, love, compassion, kindness, or something you value as your core. Now the next question is, how did that experience make you feel? How did your positive experience make you feel? Did your experience change you in any way? Did it change you? If the answer is yes, you can explain how. How has it changed you?
the last question. Can you explore the changes more fully in your life? If the answer is yes, you can explain how you can explore the changes more fully in your life. Now slowly coming out of this reflection exercise. These are the questions I was asking you during the reflection. So now you can share and explore. So um, notice that um, when we do this uh, reflective process, um, we usually first go into meditative state. So the mind becomes quiet and we are focused, we're not being lethargic or tired or falling asleep, but we are fully alert, aware, and awake. And so that is also a um, meditation technique that we use as Raja Yoga meditation um, knowledge. We are relaxed, but at the same time, very alert. And so our mind is still working, but it needs to be relaxed, calm, and peaceful. And so then um, our mind is clear. 
and we can think clearly. And so we focused on the positive things too. So think of a time when you had positive experience. So right away our focus is on something positive in the midst of very um, unprecedented event. The whole world was affected by this, but we are focusing on something, something positive, something good that came out of it. So anyone like to share? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to go there. <laughs> Please unmute yourself. Yes, Shashkan Bhai, Om Shanti, welcome. Yes, uh, you called back me to 2020 March. 2000 when? Uh, 2020 March. 20, yeah, March, yes. 2020. Yeah. So the 20, 2020 cricket match, I remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Generally, we we have passion. We Indian being a, uh, much in cricket than any other game. Uh, so March twenty twenty, as you said, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. So twenty twenty March, uh, as you know, I'm very much in yoga, and my mission. I will not say my my my, but our mission that we should reach to those who don't have means to pay the higher amount of yoga fees or whatever. So in that way, I was uh, practicing in India for a long time. And with my reason, good reason, I came to USA. And I was three years then in the USA and continuing now. But March COVID started as soon as I visited my India for a couple of days and I came back and that COVID started. And when you say dishonesty, so last three years, I was getting wrong information from my students who were teaching there to other people. So that dishonesty, I will not explain, but yes, you can understand the way they were practicing over there. Then I was helpless. I was helpless to that situation, I bear it. But this COVID came, then technology opened to me. I started to adopting my children are very worse with technology. I learned that technology from them and I started on Google Meet or some other platform. Uh, connecting people that yes, those who can afford to join me on this technology, please come forward, we will do yoga because yoga breathing techniques is very powerful for you know helping to make your immune system strong. I will not say that uh, it is challenging to medical because I respect medical aspect also that fraternity, what they are working, they are researching and all. But yes, lung capacity, we can increase that I know with breathing technique. And as you said, mindfulness, we can go to that mindfulness when we are focus on our positive thought. So you are focusing on one particular uh, uh, object. That was my target. And, uh, and what I was teaching on ground, in open space. So I started on Inco's house teaching this. And gradually it has grown and I read to you people also. So that positive thought of going to my people. And first question answer is love. Love for my people and love for what I know, what I can produce and what I can give. That love. And this thing, this journey started, and as I told you, it's Suhana Sabha. It is a blissful voyage. Suhana Sabha is a blissful voyage. 
and this voyage of my uh, teaching and connecting with people and passing whatever I know. I will not say I know everything, but whatever possible, I pass on. And uh, I got response from those who are practicing that they are very much immune to this type of danger and they are peacefully practicing this. So this, this gave me more you know, encouragement and I started approaching other people and people started giving back their respect, love and to me. So this is really introspection or uh, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. Exploring my thoughts to other uh, you people. So reflection is this reflection that uh, God, when you were asking us to meditate, I go, I went back to 2020 March before that, and what was the reports of America? I used to get messages from India, oh, why you have gone to America? America is facing this this the uh, this type of uh, you know people are just dying and they are leaving their body. There's no place in graveyard and all this. And then after a few months in India, it started. So it is reversed from America to India. So I told them, see, it can be happened to anybody. So don't blame China, don't blame America, or don't blame India. It is the universe. We are one globe and we are human and we will fight for that. That's mm. what I reflected right now also. That was Great. So you said the core value was love. 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 Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, that's very nice to hear how you started and you're still continuing. Because your question demands that. That's why I have taken this much time. I don't want it because other participants should talk. <laughs> but, uh, but your questions are four, one, two, three, four, like. So I thought whether to talk or not, but when no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, we appreciate your sharing. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, great. Okay. Anyone else like to share? Uh, sister, yes. I... go ahead. Uh, okay. So, so the first thing that happened, uh, first good thing that happened uh, with me after 2020 March is. I started working for a magazine in Texas, magazine published from Texas. And uh, that was the time when I had no job and I was not in a very good state of mind because I was not doing anything as such in prof uh, professionally. And uh, uh, I got that opportunity and it really uh, boosted me because uh, being a writer, being a blogger, I always had this thing in mind that uh, I should be working because uh, magazines are always so uh, special publications are, you know, instead of blog and other internet stuff. So that was the opportunity I got and uh, one of the good things that happened to me and the value was, uh, I would say trust or faith. I had this thing somewhere in my mind that uh, I will make it or I will get an uh, opportunity, but uh, it was seeded somewhere in my mind, but uh, some days I was so doubtful about it. Some days I was, uh, you know, confident about it, but that happened because I had this faith uh, in myself that, you know, I am capable of uh, doing that. So I, uh, I would say faith or trust uh, was the value. And uh, how did it change me? I was more confident and... Uh, I really, uh, you know, uh, I was able to prepare myself for uh, the upcoming opportunities and uh, I was more confident. I, were, I was um, uh, at my ease and I stopped blaming myself because, you know, uh, I was not so good to myself. And, you know, that really changed me because uh, that instance I was more confident and I thought that now I'm ready to, you know, 
grab many more opportunities and uh, do my best in this. And uh, last question, yes. Uh, one thing I realized that yes, I'm, uh, I can see anything or any situation, uh, be, be it lockdown, COVID or any kind of restriction, good things can happen to you but you should not leave that you know optimism inside you you should keep seeing things with optimistic eyes uh, so that was the uh, lesson i learned from this instance mm -hmm. great wow so it made you really feel positive about yes life. yeah you became optimistic that's wonderful Great, thank you for sharing. Okay, someone else like to share? I see some of you uh, just joined. Um, what we were doing uh, in the beginning was that, that we made a list of what makes you happy and how long does it last? Is that physical, spiritual? And then I introduced the um, um, another way of reflecting on the positive. It is called appreciative inquiry principles. Um, and um, if you're interested in this, um, PowerPoint, I can email it to you later. Um, yes, please. We would love to have it here. Yeah, I will write my email so you can write to me that uh, you would like a copy of this. I, I will forward it to you. Um, so the appreciative inquiry model is that we focus on the core value that you have and uh, core value are like usually peace, happiness, love, truth, compassion, kindness. It could be more things. And so we had a folk, four different components to this um, appreciative inquiry. Uh, you can look it up and um, you can look at this later. It is done by uh, David Cooper Ryder, is the name. And um, so we did the reflective process of going into meditative state and, you know, remember the time when you had the positive experience since March 2020, when the a lockdown started and so that's what we're sharing right now anyone else like to share so let me know if you'd like to share um, but i'm going to show you the next slide so the title of today's workshop was Permission to be Happy. So how do I give myself a permission, I forgot the a there, permission to stay in constant happiness? So it's really up to us. And um, I'll share a story. Oh, somebody's writing in the chat. Okay, I haven't been reading this. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, wait. No. So, um, I went to a retreat center in upstate New York. It's called Peace Village. It is Brahma Kumari's um, retreat and meditation center about maybe more than 15 years ago it was a long time ago 
and we had the free time to just be outside and just, you know, free time. I was sitting um, in the garden area and there were some flowers. And I had a question in my mind, how can I stay happy all the time? Is there a way to keep myself happy and not become unhappy? So I thought about, okay, how is that possible? First I asked myself, is it possible? And I wasn't sure, but I thought maybe it could be. And I kept looking at this flower. And you know how each flower has a different uh, features, right? Different design, some has colors in different ways. And the petals come out in different ways. Some flowers of a lot of fragrance. Um, some has these patterns that, you know, cannot be created by human beings. It is nature. It's just the way the fl each flower is. And then each one is beautiful. And how it opens up to become a flower is also amazing too. We cannot open the flower, you know, cannot force it. When it's time, it opens by itself. And I kept looking at the detail of that flower and how intricate it is made. But Nobody can copy this. Nobody can recreate it. We, we cannot do it. The flower itself is just showing its beauty. And then looking at the center of the flower, a thought came that, yes, there is a way to stay in happiness, constant happiness. And it is to see happiness in everything. So it's very simple to see happiness in everything. And I thought, oh, is it, is it that easy? Maybe it's easy to say, easy to think, but maybe not so easy to practice. But I became very happy discovering that, <laughs> that way to stay constantly happy is to see happiness in every situation, every incident, every unpleasant, experience, negative things that people do or say or mistakes I make, everything. So if I see happiness in everything, then whatever comes out of that, whatever thoughts, whatever reflections, whatever impressions I get from that will be of happiness. And so that just came in the deep contemplation. And this is what uh, we have to remind ourselves Nobody can do it for us. Nobody can make us happy or unhappy, actually. All these things that you had on your list, 
whatever physical or spiritual um, how we feel about each object or person or situation or whatever core values that you hold on to, it is up to individual person. And so it is, you know, the happiness is in our hand, really. We are in charge of our happiness. Even though when we feel like, oh, this person made me so angry, or oh, this person did this to me, and I don't know if I can even forgive because it was horrible. And we feel that, right? We experience that and we, we live by it. We keep remembering something that somebody did to us. And it's very strong. It has a very strong impression on, on us in our memories and it's hard to forget. And, you know, when you remember anything bad or negative, the experience and the emotions that, you know, associated with that experience, of course, come with that too. So then we start thinking um, like we are reliving again that experience that happened 10, 20 years ago. We're still experiencing it like as if it just happened and then we become emotional we start crying or became angry and this is not the way we want to live our lives right this is like being um completely um like taken over by something we're not free if we keep on remembering the past or people or whatever happened and whatever people said to us and whatever past that's already gone we're living in the past then we can never be happy so i decided that is not only wasting my time but it's wasting um, a lot of energy a lot of time resources everything and so i thought that is not the way i want to live my life so i decided not to do that anymore but this is a practice that we keep have you know keep on um, working at it because we slip back into our old way of thinking old patterns old way of doing things so we have to bring ourselves back and so that is to give yourself permission to see happiness in everything and it is very important to do this per mission did i spell that one it doesn't sound right but <laughs> anyway um, because we want to live in the moment, then enjoy the moment. And sometimes when something you accomplished and you feel very proud and happy about, and you keep thinking about the past also, we get stuck in the past too. Even the positive things, uh, we get stuck in that too. And we become too proud of it. And so that is also... Uh, not so good because again you're living in the past so to enjoy life as it's happening is to enjoy each moment that's happening and this is living right if we're living in the past whether it was positive or negative experience you're still living in the past and you're not moving forward and it is also good to share um, your happiness with other others. And sharing means you also um, sometimes, you know, go into the position of listening to other people share too. It's not that you're always uh, sharing and 
you know, it's me, 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 but um, you also listening to others share, and then you share the happiness. So you become happy for them as if it's happening uh, to you too. So that is a very um, healing experience. Healing and also um, very um, uplifting. And you know, somebody said optimistic, um, something that makes you move forward. And so, you know, we have to be able to uplift ourselves. You know, self empowerment is very important skills to have. So that when things happen, when some atrocities or negative experience happen in your life, you have something to, you know, um, bounce back on. It's like the pillar you can lean on. Of course, it's nice to have friends, family members or mentor anyone uh, we can turn to and in the beginning some of you were sharing you know God's presence connecting to God connecting to the divine and you know receiving the spiritual powers from the divine from the source it is also very important. Um, so not to feel lonely, not to feel alone, not to feel depressed and disheartened. Um, it is very important that we become stronger from the from our core. That's why the appreciate a perceived inquiry model in the middle, the core values, core inner you know qualities we need to know what they are it's very important to know who you are so any question before we do meditation of course you can ask after meditation too Was this um, reflective exercise helpful? Yes, it was. It was very helpful. Okay. Sister, if you could drop your email so that we can ask you for the presentation. Okay, I'll write in the chat right now. Oh, this is for everyone. So my email address is bkkyoko at gmail.com. Sister Kyoko, that was so, so helpful. And I thought the information was just, there was so much that wouldn't have occurred to me on my own, like reflecting on things. And, and I, yeah, it was, it was just a really great exercise, really, really good information and, and insight. So thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you. Okay, so I just put my um, email address. It's bkkyoko at gmail.com. Any uh, other comment or question? Sister, are you from the San Francisco Center? Yes, I live at the center with Sister Chandru and Sister Sukanya. Okay. Some of you have taken course from Sister Sukanya. <laughs> Brother Hausha, you know Brother Hausha, he does the Monday workshop and Sunday meditation. Okay. We spoke to Sister Sukanya a few times. <laughs> Great. 
Any question about the appreciative inquiry? I loved it. Thank you so much. Oh, good. You're welcome. Thank you. So we can do meditation and uh, Oh, maybe before meditation, because some of you may have to go. <laughs> um, one of the sisters was mentioning about the Friday, I think it was Sister Kelly. Friday meditation is um, on Zoom, but some of you can visit the center if you live in the neighborhood. It is uh, with live music which i play the harp and sister sukania usually does the commentary in um, live so they're not the uh, recorded meditation commentaries and music it is live on zoom and uh, it's every friday at 6 30 to 7 30 and then some sharing afterwards um, it is like a creative meditation because each week we have a different topic and Sister Sukanya doesn't read anything. It comes from her core. I'm not talking about core. It's coming from inside. So whatever the topic is, she reflects on it and then it just comes out. And it's a very beautiful experience. And I usually listen to, listen to her commentary as I play. And so my music is also improvised on the spot. Uh, sometimes I play my own compositions, but usually I try to match what um, the commentaries are as it's going. And so it's interesting. I, I say I follow sister's commentary and the sister says, no, I, I follow the music. <laughs> so we are like listening to each other's, you know, um, vibrations and it's very organic. So you may enjoy that too. It's a very new experience. So that's on Friday. And Sunday at 1030, there's meditation uh, session by Brother Hausha. And this is usually the combination of silence and commentaries. And so back and forth. And then Monday is a workshop and Tuesday is also a workshop. And everything is listed on the website, bksanfrancisco.org, I think. Anyway, if you type San Francisco Brahma Kumaris, you will get there. And then you can register and you will get the Zoom link like today. Somebody else is making, oh, okay, yeah, okay. So, uh, play another um, recorded music and do a short meditation for ending. So again, we go back into our state of peace. Breathing slowly. 
and gently reflecting on the positive core that you all have. These are your original qualities as spirits. You are souls. experiencing life through your physical body. It is the soul that experiences everything through the body. And new souls came into the body to become human beings. So you can experience life, express love, exchange creativities with others. And new souls are just tiny dot sitting in the middle of the forehead, looking out to the world through those windows. And you are eternal imperishable, everlasting points of light, souls cannot be destroyed or recreated. You're always exist as souls. And while sitting in this physical world, The soul is experiencing being somewhere beyond the physical world. In this place, no sound, completely silent, and it is very subtle. And you are just a subtle point too. No physical body. Yeah. 
all material things. No noise. And you experience something to be very peaceful. You let go of the physical world. The past. the fear of the future, you just enjoy the present moment. And this subtle feeling of peace can stay with the soul for a long time. And when there is peace within, Happiness also comes along with the peace. And when you go back to the physical world, you are able to see happiness in everything. Now slowly let us come back to the awareness of the room sitting in. Open your eyes if they were closed. You can stretch if you like. Shanti, everyone, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice to Wonderful. see all of you. Thank you, sister. It's a blessing to see you. 
You are very welcome. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Bye bye. You can write me an email and I will respond with the uh, PowerPoint. I'm also going to write you email, Tanya, Tanya Newton. I'm oh. going to write you email also. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Om Shanti. Good night. Good night. Shanti. Thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you, Sister Kyoko. Good night. Nada. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. <laughs>